Hey, my name is Luke. Today I want to talk about a crisis of leadership. Not just how to lead in the midst of a crisis, though I do have three really good things that I want to share with you at the end. But also I want to focus on why there seems to be such a shortage of courageous leaders in the midst of this crisis. And maybe it's been a problem long before this. I think, I think it definitely has. And I think I have some clues as to what's caused it. And I have bad news that it's our fault. Why is it that a virus that is less deadly than the H1N1 can shut down an entire economy? This last weekend, I decided to document more of what's been going on in the midst of the COVID-19 quarantine mayhem. You know, there's a growing voices, and I'm one of them online, who says it's time to start strategically cutting back on the quarantine. And I decided to take my son with me to go document a small rally that took place at the governor's mansion here in Oregon. Um, over a thousand people in Oregon, and to date we've lost 86. You know, Mr. Rogers said that in the midst of crisis, you should look for the helpers. Genuine leadership is really just helping. It's not trying to consolidate power when other people are weak. It's not trying to gain recognition. And it certainly is not trying to avoid controversy or making anyone upset. Helpers do what's right, they do what's best, as best as they can. So why are there so few courageous leaders? You know, I think the main thing is that we have for so long been giving our attention to the manipulative people in the world. How many headlines have you seen and clicked on, I know I have, that simply said people were mad, people were offended, and so you clicked away to see why they were mad. It's a quick way to get attention, but it's never a good way to be a leader. One of the things I've noticed is that people who get angry easily never want to be the leader anyway. They don't want to be responsible. They just want to be mad that so-and-so didn't do it their way. A manipulator is someone who, if you don't do what they say, threatens to get angry, offended, or hurt. But what they're doing is they're taking your attention away from what's right or what's best so that you'll focus on making people happy. And that's what most leaders do now. They try to make everybody happy. They try to avoid all the controversy. They're always looking for the safest route through. They're not looking for safety in the sense of keeping people alive or unhurt. They're simply trying to keep people from getting angry. That's not real leadership. That's being manipulated. The other thing that happened as we gave attention to manipulative people is that we got less and less thoughtful about why we should do what we do. People who've been manipulated become close-minded. They become bigoted. And I'm going to explain how. If you've been manipulated, the thing you don't want is an argument. And there are so many people now who hate arguing. They hate conflict. They avoid it at all costs because they've been manipulated by someone who got angry in the midst of conflict. What happens then is you don't hear new evidence. That's what a bigot is. Someone who refuses new evidence. A bigot doesn't know why they believe what they believe, especially in the face of good questions. And I'll tell you, every belief system has bigots. Every belief system, no matter how pure, will have people in it who refuse new ideas. They're closed-minded. They're bigots because they've been manipulated. So let's get to what courageous leaders do, because I believe anyone and everyone can be a courageous leader in the midst of crisis. I'm going to give you three simple things you can do. Number one, over-communicate. If you're in a position of leadership, that means you need to have more staff meetings than you normally would. But if you're not in a position of leadership, it simply means you need to call people. Start calling more and more people. People you haven't talked to in years. Check in on them. Communicate with them. It'll help. Wherever you can, give facts and avoid and break apart myths as they appear. Misinformation thrives in the midst of crisis. The second thing you can do is comfort those who are anxious or afraid. You know, those two emotions in particular, grief and fear, are not only really powerful, but they're really valid in a time like this. And to say that they're not, to try to push them aside, to try to say that's irrational, is nonsense. True leaders, people who are trying to help, never do that. And third, build confidence. By collecting diverse input, 
keeping your mind open to new evidence. Because you remember, you're not being manipulated, right? You're not a bigot. You're going to build confidence in others by communicating a calm, clear plan. You know, the plan might even be as simple as saying, I'm going to make a plan. But having steps forward, even if they're uncertain, is better than the void that we all seem to be staring into right now, which says that we don't know how anything's going to turn out and the world might collapse. We need real courageous leaders who will communicate, they'll comfort, and they'll build confidence in the people around us. That's how we'll rebuild our communities, which is what we need to begin to do right now. My name is Luke. I'm here to talk about leadership. I hope it helps.